Hi, my name is Daniel Warren Johnson. I'm working on uh, Transformers and I'm writing and drawing and you're watching comics online. We didn't get a chance to talk to Comic-Con. I had the opportunity to speak with Robert and, and hear, you know, bigger picture what the plans are for the Energon universe. But I'd really love to hear your first experience with Transformers as a brand and, you know, what your first memories are with these particular characters. Yeah, dude. Definitely would have to start with my papa, my grandfather on my mom's side. We drive down from upstate New York uh, a few times a year. And uh, he would always take me to Toys R Us. And I got to pick out like one toy and it was usually a Star Wars thing until I saw on the wall Optimus Prime. And, uh, you know, it was in the American packaging and everything, but there was something about that aesthetic, you know, that I saw in that plastic dude that just called my name. And uh, he was like, well, that's $30. What I usually get you is $10. <laughs> like, it's time to shell out. This is important. He was like, okay. And uh, that was right around the time we started watching the TV show, which was on reruns uh, at, on, at like 4.30 every day after school. This is in the 90s. I, I was born in 87, so I missed the initial airing. Um, and then, you know, seeing the movie, which, of course, changed my life like it did every other person's. and. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff, of this experience had, is tied in with me trying to draw Transformers and trying to draw like Optimus Prime and failing. Uh, I really started drawing when I was in first grade. I started off by drawing uh, like Power Rangers and stuff. And by second grade, I was trying to draw Optimus Prime and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I finally, like third or fourth grade, I gave up. I just, you know, and when I got the call to, uh, see if i would be interested in drawing transformers i didn't say yes right away but i did start practicing how to draw optimus prime <laughs> to see if i could finally figure it out uh and uh that's kind of where it started and where it is now well good news i think you nailed it so um very <laughs> very excited uh to see your take on all these classic characters um and just for the record you can't see off screen i have my original movie poster uh signed by peter and frank off to the side uh, so right on, dude. you're you're exactly right it was very impactful for so many of us and iconic um so you know getting to hear that of course you know the experience of of where everyone started with transformers is always interesting because it's so different um yes. my close my closest friend uh and i bonded over the fact that he had recorded the original movie when it aired on tv but it was recorded on betamax and his parents had only recorded the first four fifths and so he never got to see the entire thing until I came along and had a VHS copy of it later on. So that was how we bonded. But amazing, uh, you know, it's just it's one of those ridiculous stories. But uh, you know, so with with Skybound taking on you know the Energon universe, um, were you involved when Void Rivals was starting to script out having Jetfire's involvement, or did you come along after Robert had already started planting the seeds for what would become the bigger universe? I uh, definitely came uh, by, I came in at a bit of a later point. So, um, you know, we definitely uh, knew that Jetfire was going to be showing up in issue one. And there were some big moments that had been planned that Skybound had asked me to kind of stick to or maybe hint at. Um, and because Robert, when pitching uh, Hasbro, had made these kind of big islands of events that were going to happen. And it's my, it was my job to kind of build bridges to each one um uh which is nice because you know the, that means the uh story elements and the character motivations the kind of transformers that show up are all my choice um and allowed me to have a agency within like getting into some of those bigger islands but it's also nice to have those islands because <clears throat> you know you don't have to think as much uh you can have you know it's like the sandbox is a little smaller which just makes it that much easier to start getting going on a story um it's been a really good time well from a story perspective you you know so i've read the first issue so this will be held mm. until after so we can talk spoilers you know as, as you feel comfortable with um sure. obviously you know you, you've used a lot of generation one elements uh with yes. your, your concept but you still you know put that twist on it so subverting expectations um what drew you to these characters in particular for both the the Autobots and Decepticons as your primary cast for the first arc at the very least 
Well, I definitely wanted to pick Cliff Jumper, which is a little bit of a swerve, uh, no pun intended, away from maybe somebody that uh, another character that people might expect. And I also really, I've always loved Cliff Jumper. Um, and uh, VW Beetles are insanely hard to deck draw. <laughs> uh, um, also, Optimus Prime, he's my favorite. He's always been my favorite. So, of course, he was going to go in. Uh, Starscream and Skywarp are my favorite Decepticons. So they had to go in. Um, a lot of it was just me picking my favorites, honestly, um, and letting the chips fall where they may. Also, full disclosure, I drew those uh, those team lineups before I wrote issue one. So uh, <laughs> nothing is set in stone. There may be some surprises in store. And including RC in with the Generation 1 characters, I think was an interesting choice as well. Uh, was that more because of the attachment from the movie or another creative choice? That was actually uh, a request by Skybound. They wanted to make sure that there was a Lady Autobot in the first cast, which was totally great. Um, and I had to pick one from the existing group of Lady Autobots. And because of my love for the movie, RC goes in. And um, she is also very hard to draw. So that's a challenge <laughs> that I'm working on. So yeah. as, in addition to, of course, the, the, the robotic heroes that we're, we're dealing with, um, you, you've got Spike and some classic G1 you know, humans involved. Um, yeah. how, do you, how do you feel about human characters in the world of Transformers? Because it feels like it's a divisive topic. Like, what, mm. what's your personal take? Well, I, it's my opinion that you need them to really make it work. Um, I, <clears throat> especially when starting out, from the beginning you know i feel like I, I really felt like it was important to have some sort of like hobbit like element of walking into the world from a pov kind of view uh seeing these robots for the first time and interacting with them while also trying to give the humans a little bit of agency to uh show that they matter and their actions have consequences even in a world where they can get stomped on um it just makes the stakes go higher and it makes the action set pieces a little bit more fun when you have those elements of, you know, mini chaos running around. Um, and it just also is a little bit easier for maybe a non transformer person to get into the story. When you have like a human that's going through human things being paired up with an Autobot going through Autobot things in war, you know, there's two very uh, intense differences there. Uh, from point of view but i'm also trying to tell a story about connection amongst all sorts of beings and you know uh you can't have uh peace without first having strife and i wanted to show that through the human lens for sure that's that's how i feel about it so i, I guess as far as these characters in particular who has surprised you the most as you've been scripting this first arc you know, I know you have you know, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, experience and passion with these characters, but just more, which one caught you off guard as you were planning out your, your main story? Definitely would have to be Jetfire. Um, he was put in there because he starts in Void Rivals. Uh, it was a necessity to have him there. I would not have picked him otherwise. But, and even while scripting him, you know, I wasn't thinking much about it. He was just kind of in my head, you know, especially when you're writing like issue one, there's a lot of characters and beats in there that you're just kind of putting in because they work in a mathematical kind of way, you know, and like, oh, this per this character needs to be here because I need conflict and this person needs to be here because I need a uh, drive. And you're kind of setting up the chessboard in a way that you hope is interesting, but you're really just, it's a little bit like throwing darts at a uh, dartboard in the dark um, and you're kind of seeing what sticks and as I was drawing Jetfire I was like this guy is so much fun to draw so not a ton of surprises on the story element of things but I couldn't believe how much I loved drawing Jetfire so I was like you know I, um, I had no idea so uh, yeah is what it is I guess uh, but um, yeah, the biggest surprise came from actually drawing Jeff Fire, for sure. I really appreciate the setup from Void Rivals into your, your first issue and having Jeff Fire really be the the kickoff for you know what brings the Transformers into this, you know, 
current and present day. Um, just the setup in general, I thought was really interesting, but more so that he's completely unaware as to what's been going on during yeah. his absence. Uh, that was fun. That was really fun. And um, that was, you know, and uh, the his unawareness uh, was, you know, the, the scope of his unawareness was uh, like, I was mostly up to me. I'm having trouble remembering it now, but like, you know, Robert was like, uh, hey, Jet Fires and Void Rivals, so he has to be the one to wake up everybody in uh, Transformers issue one, uh, which is the catalyst for everything getting started. And I was like, yeah, no problem. But then as I'm scripting it, you know, I'm I'm trying to get into the character Jet Fire and um, him not knowing was just the best way to have things get started. Otherwise, like, why would he activate Starscream, you know? Or like, why would he not stop that from happening? You know, it's like that, that his uh, innocence is what inadvertently causes war to start all over again. It's kind of cool. Okay, completely off topic. We've got to talk about the collection in the background. What is your, oh, yeah. what, what is your highlight? What, what is, what's your go-to piece? Uh, well, I, there's only, I only have doubles of one figure and that's uh, the Magic Square Light of Peace Optimus. Uh, it's the, it's the ca- Japanese, Chinese knockoff. Um, <laughs> I love this guy. I love how tune accurate he is. Um, his posability is amazing. He has like his fingers are like incredible and like can like make like basically sign language. Um, he's amazing. Uh, and my favorite toy in my entire house by far. Um, but that being said, I do collect every Optimus G1 Optimus that I can find. <laughs> you still have your original one that you had mentioned at the beginning of this? I have it somewhere. Um, I got a newer version because the old one was, was so beat up. I also lost his hands on the school bus, uh, <laughs> which was a very formative moment in my childhood. But um, uh, he's somewhere. And I remember my wife tried to throw him out. And I was like, this is grounds for divorce. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, but you don't display him. I'm like, doesn't matter. There's the door. <laughs> Daniel, it's a pleasure to meet you. I really, I mean, every you know, word of it. I'm so excited to see what you guys do. And uh i loved every page you know i definitely went back and reread it a couple times just to enjoy all the different you know elements so it was a great way to start thanks brother